when I first start coding, data structures and algorithms feel too much, like trying to climb a giant mountains of hard ideas and boring words. I spend hours looking through books and videos that were hard to get, easier... which things for an easier way. But what if learning data structures and algorithms could be easy to understand? In this video, I will show you the main part of data structures and algorithms, using easy way to understand things, pictures, ideas, and things from real life. Thus, finally, make data structures and algorithms make sense for me. I have used this idea a lot other software engineers at big tech company like Microsoft, Amazon, and now at TikTok. My goal isn't just to tell you the definitions, but to help you really get them so you can use them well. If you are just starting out and want a good start in coding without feeling so stuck, there's the guys I wish I had. Stick around to finally get really good at data structures and algorithms. Okay, so why I learn about these topics that look hard? Why does it matter if your code is fast and not wasteful? Isn't getting the right answers good enough? Being good at data structure and algorithms is really about being good at solving problems the fast way. The difference between an okay developer with the really good ones is often knowing why one way to solve a problem is better than another, especially when you have more data or harder problems. These skills is what get you job that pay a lot of money and make you special. People in interviews often ask you to make your code better and faster. And knowing big O's help you check how fast it is and make it faster. How fast and wasteful code is often measured by time complexities, how long it takes, and space complexities, how much computer's memory is used, when you have more stuff to work with. We talk about how fast it is using something called big O notations. This is like a special language to talk about how well the step in your code works. Let's think of it like this. Imagine two ways to find friend names in your phone. Way A, look through every single name one by one. Way B, open your contact, go to the first letters of the name, and look from there. If your list has N name, look to each one may take N step. If you have twice as many names, it takes twice as many steps. That's called linear growth, or speak of N. When you have more data, the time it takes grow at the same speed. What if you just need the very first names on the list? It doesn't matter if you have 10 names or 10 million. It still takes just one step to look at the first one. That is constant time, or big old one. This is the quickest way some things can work. Binary search, which we will talk more about later, help you search super quickly if your data is in order. With these steps, you can get rid of half of the stuff you still have to look through. Think of looking for a word in a dictionary. You open it near the middle, and then you know if you need to look into the first half or the second half. You keep making the space you are looking much smaller. This is called logarithmic time. Big O of log n. It is faster than big O of n, but a bit slower than constants big O of 1. Big O of n squared is much, much slower. This happens when every single thing in your group of data need to check with every other thing. Like if everyone in the classroom had to shake hands with everyone else. The works grow really fast if you get more data. This is very slow. So, big O of 1 is way faster than big O of n or even speak of log n. But speak of log n is much better than speak of n if you have a lot and lot of data. Understanding speak o and the usual ways we talk about speed like speak of 1, speak of log n, speak of n, speak of n log n, speak of n square, speak of 2 to the n is super important for job interview. This helps us see which ways is better and pick the best one. Knowing how to figure out time and space complexities shows you are thinking hard about how to make things fast. The best way is writing code that gets slower and slower as your data grow. This makes people wait and use up too much computer's power. The good way is writing fast, smart code that works even with a lot of data. This makes your program work fast and makes use of good coders that people want to hire.
Okay, we have talked about why being fast is super important. In the beginnings, I said how data structures and algorithms can feel like too much when you've just started. Before we talk about how we actually set up our information to make things fast, I'm wondering what is the one of the biggest things about data structures and algorithms that have feels confusing or like too much for you so far? Tell me in the comments. I want to know what is tricky for you so we can make data structures and algorithms easy to get in the next video. Okay, being fast is super important and Big O help us talk about it. The way you are storing your information has a really big effect on how fast you can find or change it. It's like picking the right tools for a job. Trying to use a screwdriver to hit a nail just doesn't work well. Different ways to store data have good things and not so good things. Make them good for a certain jobs. Data structures are just different ways to put information. Think of them like different kind of box or holder. It's good for certain jobs. The main ways to store data that are important for coding interviews are array, linked list, stack, queue, binary trees, or hash table. And graphs are also important. Learning how it works in size and how fast it do things is super important as well. Array or list. These are simple lists of things in a certain order. They are good at getting some things by its numbers in the list because you can get it super fast if you know its index. Think of us like a line of lockers at school. Each one has its own spot. Array store data is all stored together in the computer's memory. Getting things by its numbers is super fast, pick up one. But adding or taking out things in the middle can be slow, pick up n, if other things have to move. This is fast if you add to the very end. They usually cannot change their sign. But some special array can grow. They do it by making a new bigger one and copying everything over, which usually happens not so very often. For linked lists, this allows a change where each link holds something and points to the next link. Take up the toy car where each car is hooked to the next one, or a treasure hunt where each clue leads to the next. They are good at adding and removing links without moving everything else. This is super fast, big or one, if you are know which links you want to change. But this is slow, big of n, if you have to find the links first by going through the change. You don't have to worry about them getting too full. But finding a certain link is slower because you have to go one by one from the start. They are easier to change than array when adding or removing things. Next, we have stack. Stack is a list where the last thing you put in is the first thing you take out. You only add to the top and take away from the top. Think of the stack of pancakes. The last pancake you put on is the first one you eat. Adding or taking from the top is fast, big of one. But looking for some things in the middle of the stack is slow, big of n. Stack I use a lot in a way to search called that first search. Then we have the opposite ones is the queue. This are like stack, but the first thing you put in is the first thing you take out. You add to the back of the line and then take away from the front. Think of waiting in line for ice creams. The first person in line gets served first. Adding to the back or taking from the front is fast, but looking for someone in the middle of the line is slow, pick up n. Queue are used a lot in a way to search called breakfast search. Next, we have hit or priority queue. Think of a pile of block where the most important one, biggest or smallest, is always on the top. They are often called priority queue because the one on the top is always the most important. Hip are actually a special kind of tree shape. Getting the top ones is fast, big of one, but getting any other blocks is slow, big of n. When you add or remove a block, others might move up or down to keep the most important ones on top. This usually is pretty fast, big of block n, which is very good in this case. It's useful for an algorithm called Dijkstra. Next, we have hash map or hash table. Think of a room full of mail's book. It's with their number. 
they store things in pairs, like a name and a tag. The special tricks take the key like a name and tell you which mailbox number to use. This makes finding and adding or taking out things usually super super fast. Bigger one. But sometimes two different keys may get the same mailbox number. This causes a hash collision. When this happens, we have a way to fix it, like putting all the things of that numbers in a little list at that mailbox. If too many things go to the same mailbox, this can get slow, big of n, which is a worst case scenario. But most of the times, they are really fast. In Python language, these are called dictionary. Next one we have set. This is a group of things where x thinks it different and the order doesn't matter. You cannot have two of the same things and they are not in any special line. Next we have tree. This is a data organized like a family tree with parents and children. A binary tree is a tree where x persons or node have no more than two kids. A binary search tree is special. Everything to the left of the person is smaller, and everything to the right is bigger. This makes it fast, often big of log ends to find, add, and remove things, like looking into the dictionary. But if the tree gets unbalanced, this can act like a slow link list. In the worst case scenarios, it's big of n. Next, similar to tree, we have graph. This is like a dot connects by line. Graph shows how things are connected like friends on websites, city on a map, or classes you need to text before other classes. Connections can be one-way street or two-way street. Different jobs need different ways to store information. Knowing which one to pick is super important. For example, arrays are great for getting things fast by its index. Link lists for easy ends and remove things. Stack for last in first out situations, like remembering steps. Q for first in first out situations like task in the line, hash map for looking things up fast with a key, and trees or graph for information like a family tree or a network. Picking the right way to store things help you make a really good plan, which is algorithms in this case. Knowing how they work and how fast they are help you choose the best one. So we put our information in orders using a data structure. Now, how do we actually do some things helpful with that information, like finding something specific in a fast way? That is where algorithms come in. An algorithm is like a list of steps, like recipes, or a way to fix certain problems. When you are using fast algorithms with the right data structures, cool things happen. This is the secret to making great, speedy computer programs. Some algorithms are much, much faster than others. Algorithms are what we do with our information. There are special steps for certain ways of storing data, like steps for searching or sorting in array. There are also other smart ways to solve problems, like recursion or dynamic programming. So for searching algorithms, how do you find certain numbers in the list? We can do it with linear search, looking for x things one after another. For sortings, how do you put a list of numbers from the smallest to the biggest? This is something coders do a lot. Selection sort a simple way. Find the very smallest things and put at the beginning. Then find the next smallest from what is left and put at second, and so on. This is big of n square which can be slow. We also have merge sort. This is a faster way. Let's keep splitting the list into two smaller lists until you have a tiny list already sorted. Then let's put them back together, merge them. Make sure they stay in order. Let's break the problem into small pieces and then put them back together. This is big of n log n, which is pretty fast for sorting. For mod lists, you cannot sort much faster than big of n log n. For traverse trees or graph, how do you visit x node in the trees or graph? We have different search algorithms. This is like going down one path as fast as you can. If you hit a dead end, you go back and try another path. Let's go deep first. This often you a stack like the pancakes. Another way we can solve these problems is by using breakfast search algorithms. 
like checking all your friends first, then all your friends' friends, level by level. As often use a queue, like an ice cream line. Breakfast is good for finding the quickest ways if on road is the same lane. Besides this, there are other smart ways to figure out problems. These are fancy names for other cool tricks. Recursions, dynamic programming, backtracking, and greedy. They are important for solving many kinds of computer problems. Picking the right algorithms and using it with the data that's stored in the right way is a secret to making awesome speeding programs. Knowing the main ways to do things help you find the fast solutions. Data rushers and algorithms are not two different scary things. They are super teams. They help each other make things fast. Learning them isn't about remembering all of them. It is about getting the main ideas and how it changes the way you think to find the best way to solve a problem. It changes how you think from does it work to how work is it, especially when there are a lot of data. You go from just making code that work to making code that work really well and fast. Getting good at data structures and algorithms really changes things, not just for interviews, but for being a super good coders. To have this idea stick in your brain and have something you can look at quickly, I have made a free data structures and algorithms essential cheat sheet just for you. Let's have the main idea we talk about, how fast common things are using Big O, and a fast helpers for when to use its way to store data. It's a great friend to this video and help a lot when you get ready for job interview. So click the links in the description below to download your free data structures algorithms essential cheat sheet now. Understanding data structures and algorithms is crucial, but to truly land those top high paid tech role and maximize your earnings potential, knowing which language will be the most in demand in 2025 is essential. Curious which ones will get used though high paid salary? Click the video right here to discover the top programming language for high paying jobs in 2025 and take the next crucial steps in accelerating your software engineer's career. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one here.